Whoa. Whoa. That doesn't look like what it looked like before. No. Uh, so this oil is very much on fire. Okay. I need something to... Uh. Eric! So our friend Eric at 886 has a steak on his menu that he walks ears. Brent, have you ever walked here to steak? No, I don't want a walk. Me neither. You know something about steaks, though. Know a thing or two about steaks. So we are going to bring our expertise of steaks to his expertise of walks. And together with our powers combined, we'll rule the world. Of walks seared steaks. Of walks seared steaks. You're probably wondering, what's up with this big hunk of meat I'm standing next to? This is a ribeye. I've grilled ribeyes, I've pan seared them. I am a little curious and skeptical about how this is gonna work because wok searing, it just sounds like it might burn the hell out of it, but not necessarily cook it all the way through. But we're no chefs and Eric is, and he says he can do this. Right now, Eric has the hanger steak for his black pepper steak on the menu. He mentioned he wanted a few different options to try something new. That's why we're thinking ribeye is the cut to go with. We figure the number one thing we can do is prep out a couple of different ways of, uh, of cooking the ribeye. We're gonna start with our dry aged ribeye, which is why this looks like one funky monkey on the outside. The ribeye is one of the pricier steaks on the animal, and I think it's one of the cuts that actually really lives up to the price tag. It is consistent always, it's tender always, it's one of the fattier muscles. You know what you're getting with a ribeye. And that's why the ribeye's the ribeye and the ribeye's the ribeye. Brent, we're at the point where I'm tired of talking about the damn thing and I just wanna do the thing, what do you think? Let's cut some steaks. Let's cut some steaks. All right, Brent, I got my ribeyes. Cleaned a couple of, of, of them up already. Got a couple more. I grabbed the hanger because why would we not eat four steaks today? After all, it is a Monday. So let's eat four steaks for breakfast. Mm -hmm. But if this is our control that Eric is already using, just curious, how is it different than the ribeye? Just curious. A couple of curious boys. We're gonna do it a couple different ways, right? We're gonna sous vide one. We're gonna smoke one. And then uh, one all natural, but with a wok, it's gonna be black and blue. That's gonna be a super, super hard sear. Yeah. Let's hit the road. So, as you know, we have the black pepper steak on the menu. It's currently the hanger steak. Right. We wanted to see if we could bring that up to more like a steakhouse kind of thing, blended with a Taiwanese night market style. So the ribeye was the perfect choice, and we'll see how we can cook these babies on a wok. Is that something you typically do? Like, I've never, I've never heard of that, but like searing large proteins on a wok just doesn't seem very typical. It's pretty simple, honestly. Just You have high heat, and you have your protein. We came about this technique really because we're a small kitchen and uh, we do quite a bit of turns at night and we just needed something that is really efficient in terms of searing meat. And one day I was like, F it, let's throw it up on a wok. And it turned out great. You get that really nice American steakhouse char uh -huh. on the protein, but the inside doesn't cook as much. I'm super excited. Um, I'm super intimidated. I know we all haven't had breakfast yet, so <laughs> I hope you're hungry. We have our sous vide to 125. We have our smoked to 125. We have our raw. And then we have the hanger because that's what you're using now. We figured we would bring a constant All right. to see how these actually interact a little bit more. So let's cook some steaks. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna do the smoked one and then you guys do the other two. Any wok, you need to season it with a little bit of oil. Uh, it does impart on the flavor of everything it used to be cooked with. Uh, so oiling it constantly and consistently is very key. I mean, it's got a fry in there. Exactly. And you want the oil to be kind of like the cooking vessel between the, the super hot wok and the steak itself. All right, let's do this thing. Let's walk and roll. I, you're fired. I can't fire you, but I think I just fired you. Oh yeah. Literally, we just keep moving it. Fat, fat and a lot of heat. Fat, fat, and fire. Dude, you've got steakhouse seared in 30 seconds. Yep. 
All right, so who's next? I want to do it. All right. I'm going to do the sous vide one. Wow, so you can see like that fat like already, already cooking off. Wow. I think we're good. It's a beauty. That's a healthy sear. Good God, that was so fast. Black and blue, black and blue. We needed some flames. Flames on the outside. There we go. How do you know you're cooking if it's not on fire? <laughs> what I always say. Yeah, that's what I expected. So I'm gonna do the hanger steaks right now, like how we do them in the restaurant. Okay. And I guess we can uh, compare it to the ribeyes. All right. I have never seen a hanger come off a grill or out of a pan looking like that before. Yeah. All right, we have five cooked steaks. Yep. Yep. We should probably eat them all the in the name <laughs> of science. So let's start with the hanger. Good. This is our constant. Yep. Pretty nice crust on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the char mm -hmm. does add like a slight smokiness to the general flavor. It's very similar to being grilled, but way more crispy. Yeah. Black and blue? Black and blue. That is incredibly tender. Yeah. Like, it just completely falls apart. Yeah, you can't normally do that with a steak. You can't just with your hands yeah. just boop. My only hesitation about this was that black and blue can sometimes be a little bit chewy. It was the opposite. So tender, so crispy on the outside. Curious about the sous vide and whether that actually broke down the fat. Uh -huh. um, but usually sous vide steaks are a little bit more mild. Yeah. So curious where we ended up. Mm -hmm. Wow, it looks tender. Oh, it looks incredibly tender. It's a giant piece for you. Yep, same thing. Just kind of pulls apart. Oh. Incredible. But to be frank, I think I prefer the black and blue. Uh, a, it's less work. <laughs> uh, B, I think by just searing it and then letting the residual heat kind of carry over the cooking while resting, uh, you get a little bit more of that beef flavor. And somehow this is, in my opinion, more tender than this. I know, super surprising. Yeah. These steaks were like literally right next to each other on the animal. These are all from the same loin, so there really shouldn't be any discernible difference from the raw material. All right, let's try this smoky boy. I know, I'm so excited. Yeah. I didn't think the smoke was gonna do anything to it, but this definitely tastes like beef bacon. Yeah. You know how like, little ends of the bacon burn a little bit. It's got a little bit of that flavor. It's got all of the smoke. It is super beefy. Talking about the menu, what do you think? Where are you going? Yeah, so I think between these two cuts of meat, it's a very fundamental difference. The hanger steak is gonna be a little bit chewier. Uh, it does have all the beefy notes that we would want, but the ribeye is just a different experience. That's what we set out to do is to almost have steakhouse quality steak and a weird Taiwanese restaurant. And I think ribeye is our way to go in terms of the black pepper steak. So everyone at home, tear the oven out of your house, yep. put in a fucking wok, and cook everything in it. Yes. Yeah. Literally everything. Yeah. Um, wow. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Guys, we made some good steaks today. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs>